자, 이어질 대담은요. 어, 글로벌 웹 3.0 투자 생태계와 부산을 주제로 할 것입니다. 어, 오렌지 다오의 토마스 펀, 시그넘 캐피탈의 어, 리우 에시턴, 노나고, 카, 노나고의 카주시 오카모토와 함께 어, 글로벌 웹 3.0 투자 생태계와 부산을 주제로 초기 단계의 디지털 자산 프로젝트에 투자하며 어, 블록체인 기술을 보편화하는 논스 클래식 강유빈 대표님이 함께 해주시겠습니다. 네 분을 박수로 환영해 주시기 바랍니다. 아, 아. <웃음> Hello guys, uh, I'm Yubin, founder of n o n s Classic. Uh, n o n s Classic is a Web3 accelerator and venture capital. We have been born out of one of the largest hacker house called n o n s Community. So I'm, I'm really honored to invite our special uh, global investors. So I want to introduce us one by one. Uh, Kaz, could you introduce yourself and introduce your company? Sure, yeah. Uh, thank you for having me. My name is Kaz Okamoto. Uh, I'm based in San Francisco right now, originally from Japan. So uh, I'm a, founder, a founding partner at Nonagon Capital. Nonagon Capital is a, a San Francisco-based Web3 venture fund. We are uh, only focusing on Web3 investments and uh, We are acting as a bridge to the U.S. market and also the Japanese market. And we are connecting an uh, important person to the, uh, the, the end project between uh, Asian market and also uh, Europe and also uh, United States as well. And also I'm a member of Hydra DAO, which is uh, the, uh, the world's first fund of funds investment DAO. We are actually having an event in uh, Istanbul next week. And so, yeah, we are, uh, they are very also focusing on investment DAO. So I have uh, like uh, two hats in the Web3 ecosystem. Nice, nice to meet you all and uh, thank you very much for having me. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. And Ash from Signal c a p t u r Yeah, hi everyone, uh, my name is Ash. I'm originally Malaysian, but now I'm residing in Singapore. So I'm with Signum Capital, and we are a global crypto native uh, venture fund based out of Singapore. And um, we are investing in early stage pre-seed to seed projects in the space. Uh, we have been operating since 2017, um, and currently we are operating a joint fund with one of the publicly listed banks in Singapore. Nice to meet you guys. Thank you. And Thomas, could you? Hi everyone, uh, this is Thomas from Orange DAO. Um, so Orange DAO is a uh, founders DAO and our vision is want to be the best place for Web3 founders to build their next unicorn. Um, the members of the DAO consist of YC alumni, um, also founders that will be backed by the fund. Um, and uh, I'm born and raised in Hong Kong, um, so and I've been I actually live in Seoul for a couple of weeks. So that's kind of the fun, fun fact. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the introductions. Yeah, they are all from like uh, uh, Asian countries: Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong. It's really coincidence, yeah, for me to have you guys. Uh, I want to ask about uh, crypto or Web3 market side first. Uh, Do you think there will be the next bull market? Uh, if yes, why? When do you think the bull market will come again? Uh, who want to answer first? Yep, c a s please. Uh, that's a really good question. And it's, I'm having that question uh, most of the time when, when I had the time to talk with the other venture capitals. And their, their opinion is more like, a, Of course, uh, the like, bull market is coming again. Uh, when, when, when you see the history, um, when it's coming, is a, they're thinking as a, after 2025. Because next year, we have so many uh, like events, like uh, halving in Bitcoin and also 
uh, presidential uh, election in the United States. So that if you look at the like history, the bull market is coming from uh, high liquidity. So the last time we had the COVID and uh, there are so the very low interest rate and the liquidity is going to equity and also token. So right now, uh, we have very high uh, interest rate in the United States. So that in 2024, uh, uh, like next year, the interest rate is going down and the more liquidity is coming to the equity and also uh, token. So that's a, that will be trigger, the biggest trigger to the bull market. But uh, because the interest rate is not going to lower like after uh, 2024, it's gradually getting up. And also uh, the halving in Bitcoin is uh, going to stimulate uh, the Ethereum market as well, of course. And also the, the president uh, election is one of reason to stimulate the crypto market as well. So I, I see that still the US market is the really huge. And so also I believe that after 2025, uh, so the bull market is coming. Great. Is there any other different like opinion? I think for me, I mean, we, we had a major run up uh, during the 2020 to 2021 uh, period. Uh, you know, it was an exuber exuberant period where uh, things were flying um, and, and fundamentals were, were thrown out of the window and, and valuations were um, at its all-time all high, right? Um, so I think right now we are experiencing a, a mean reversion um, to where things are more normal um, and, and uh, valuations are uh, not too exorbitant. Um, yeah, so I, I think um, the, the sentiment of um, crypto native users is uh, quite positive. Um, you know, base, the base layers have been created and, and we see um, activities uh, slowly picking up on chain again, uh, you know, coupled with uh, the halving as, as Cass mentioned and um, Many institutions and family offices are more receptive towards uh, holding these uh, digital assets. So I think, yeah, definitely there is um, more attention to the space and, and more liquidity will, will definitely flow in uh, from, from other markets. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to move on to the, just the next questions and want to give that to Thomas. So if the bull market comes um, maybe next in one year or two years, which sectors do you think the most opportunistic uh, in the next bull market? Why? Oh, wow. Um, I, I wish I know. <laughs> We're going to like, triple down on it. Uh, but I think like, from a macro perspective, I think everyone's talk about how to onboard the next kind of billion user. Um, I think like, user has always been kind of people getting very skeptical about Web3, right? It's like, oh, this is very niche. You know, it's only a handful of people who are using it, you know. So I think whatever that you're working on that really kind of empower uh, people to can afford, I think that will get a lot of attention, uh, especially when kind of the bull market coming. Um, another aspect of that, I would say, like, I can see a lot of kind of government uh, really kind of putting effort into using Web3 or, you know, blockchain or even like crypto exchange to kind of boost their... Um, you know, kind of like GB, GDP for the city. And, um, and, and I think that makes a lot of sense because that's kind of like one of the few things that they can potentially like 10x or 100x what they already have right now. Um, so I think if any kind of um, startup or product that kind of related to it, it could be stable coin, it could be like, um, you know, security, um, you know, things that are needed to kind of bring the mass to Web3. Right. Do you guys have any other like additional opinions regarding the sectors you guys think opportunistic? Uh, I think, um, yeah, as I alluded to um, before this talk, um, we are just having a private chat between the, the investors. Um, I, I think the, the lowest hanging fruit for, um, to onboard the mass retail will definitely be 
um, things that people can relate to. So what this means for us is uh, games and also uh, social applications. I think um, a, a good test, right, if, is you ask your, your friends um, how often they use you know, financial applications on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and I think chances are they, they probably don't. Um, but, but if you ask them which game or which uh, social media applications they use, uh, I, I think these are, these are more frequent and, and it's even on a daily basis. So I think, yeah, to, to onboard like, the mass audience and, and retail users um, will, will definitely come from, from these uh, two areas, uh, in my opinion. Yeah. Yep. Uh, thanks for your opinion. And I want to just uh, move on to other sectors, like uh, what uh, about investment considerations. Uh, the bear market like, lasts like, longer than everybody's expectations. So the investors should become more careful before their investments. So what is the most important thing you consider when you guys decide to invest in bear market? Is that industry, runway, team? Uh, what is it? Has, could you answer first? Yeah, uh, I think that the most important things to survive in uh, current winter market is conviction. So you have to believe what you are doing. So there are so many like noises you are getting as a founder. Like uh, uh, AI is booming right now, and also the other technology is also useful. And then you are going to get uh, many noises. But if you have the conviction and you are truly believing in what you are building, you you don't uh, you are not hearing any other like negative comments and in this time uh, i mean in the winter time building things is the most important things to to survive and when we have the like uh like more bear market yeah, what you're building is going to like uh bloom and increase the user number of users, and also you can get the fund uh, from VCs or other investors. So I think conviction is really important, and uh, yeah, it, it's important. Awesome. Any other answers? Yeah, Thomas. Um, I think this is a general for a crypto founder. I think being crypto native. It's super important, um, especially in a bear market because you really need to understand um, your target user or what you're building. You know, are you, you know, really building things for the right reason? Um, and I think if you're not like crypto native enough, um, it really show, especially, you know, <laughs> you don't have a lot of people left and the people left are really kind of have convictions. They're kind of like expert in whatever that they're doing. Um, so you can, you can't just fake it, you know. Yeah, thanks for the answers. And uh, Ash, I want to ask yeah, about like uh, founders. Yeah, when you see like a team, like all the teams, what is the most important factor you see the first from the teams? Yeah, I, I think um, maybe I built on um, Thomas' point, right? Uh, being, being crypto native is, is super important. Uh, but I think for, for apps or um, more consumer-facing apps, uh, we, we like to see a blend of uh, founders. So what that means is having a crypto native founder who knows how to navigate um, things on chain, be it tokenomics or um, you know which base layers to build on, uh, but also a a Web two founder who who knows how to market um, the app to to retail audiences. I, I think in in crypto, um, a lot of projects are. Uh, catered towards developers and, and not retail audience. And this makes it very hard for them to experience uh, mass adoption, right? Because um, it's, it's, a, it's a, um, a tiny circle that they are um, marketing their project to. And, and you know, in, in, if you don't get your users, um, you don't get traction and you don't get to, uh, you know, raise the next round as well. So I think, yeah, um, a blend of these uh, two skill sets is, is highly important. Um, I think what we also look at is uh, the founders, like whether they are in, in it for the long term or whether they are playing you know, just short-term games 
uh, I think we have seen that a lot in, in especially a lot of NFT projects where they raise a ton of money only to, to check out from the ecosystem. Um, because, you know, I mean, it, building is hard, and especially in the bear market as well. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I think one of the ways to, to how to find out um, uh, a founder's motivation is, is to actually uh, talk to them on a personal level. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes we, we fly out to, to conferences to meet these founders. Um, you, you can glean a lot of insights, uh, something that you can from a, from a Zoom call. Uh, you know, their, their body language and, and their, how, how they interact with you, I think it's all crucial in terms of making an investment. Thanks for the answers. Uh, now I want to move on to the more specific, like uh, crypto native, like uh, questionnaires. I want to ask about infrastructure first. Uh, which layer one ecosystem do you believe the most opportunistic? Why? Uh, Thomas, could you answer that? Um, we, we don't, I, I would say like we, we don't really pick a side. I think this is like a, a, a question for the founder. Like they should have a good reason why they picked this, right? And, and it could be part of the plan, it could be there's particular insight they understand. Um, so that's, you know, we don't, we don't say we don't invest in this or that chain, so. Awesome, okay, answers. Kaz, do you have any opinion? Yeah, I think uh, it's obvious uh, Ethereum is uh, the most important ecosystem, including layer two, because, uh, so Ethereum still have big problem about the scalability and then it's, it's slow. And the gas fee is still expensive, but the most of people are still using the Ethereum because of the, uh, the, 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 the variable uh, stuff in ecosystem. And I, I believe it, it takes, I mean, it will last longer, like in five years or probably in 10 years as well, because they are trying to uh, improve themselves using layer two or scale uh, roll-up technologies as well. And I, I, yeah, I understand there are so many trying to, uh, so many blockchains trying to kill the Ethereum. And still, right now, uh, modular blockchain is uh, trying to do the kill the Ethereum. But if you look at the market and numbers, it's still the Ethereum is the king. So that, that's why I agree. Thank you for the answers. Yeah, Ethereum is king. Okay. Uh, I want to move on to the DeFi sector. Uh, Ash, uh, do you believe uh, DeFi, uh, what do you think the most opportunistic sectors that in the next like, one year or two years in DeFi sectors? Why? Uh, yeah, I, I think um, from, from 2019, uh, we have seen a lot of uh, innovations in the space. Um, you know, from AMMs to on-chain money markets. Um, and, and this uh, provided a new paradigm for people to, to trade on uh, permissionlessly and also, you know, with a few clicks or a few swipes on your phone, you could um, obtain a sort of a di digital asset. Um, I, I think, yeah, for right now, in, in, at least in the primary markets, um, a lot of these innovations are... Um, just incremental solutions or incremental upgrades to um, incumbents um, and, and new projects that are building on, uh, on top of layer ones or on new layer ones or layer twos are um, just forks of existing products. So it's, it's honestly hard to uh, back them from a uh, venture standpoint um, because they, they do not represent a zero to one innovation. Um, and, and they are operating in a rather uh, red ocean as well. Um, so I think, yeah, in, uh, I, I feel that, you know, the DeFi landscape right now is, is in a slump. Um, and and what, what needs to be done is uh, two things, right? Uh, the first is to abstract away a lot of um, the clunkiness of interacting with uh, DeFi protocols. Um, your average user is probably not going to, you know, download a... Uh, on-chain or EOA wallet and, and deal with all the com complexities of navigating a DeFi ecosystem uh, with so many chains, with so many layer ones and layer twos. Um, the base layers as well needs to be um, optimized in order to build uh, efficient DeFi protocols. Uh, 
yeah, I, I think to answer your question more directly, um, payments is, is, uh, is a good um, sector to, to bet on, uh, as well as uh, on, on and off ramp projects as well. Yeah. Thanks for the answers. Uh, I want to move on to the NFT sector. Yeah. Um, do you believe the NFT market could be recovered again in the future? And if yes, uh, what kinds of uh, sectors of NFTs do you believe the most opportunistic? Has? I think th there's two types of uh, NFT, uh, PFP and also NFT uh, use for the loyalties. So the PFP, uh, if there's no specific utilities other than like uh, having the PFP as a like uh, profile picture, I don't think there is a uh, additional value for the uh, the future. So there, there's some uh, great projects like uh, 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 Pudgy penguins. Like they, they they have some other utilities as are using as a uh, profile picture. Uh, so. The, as a PFP, they, they need to have more yeah, like other utilities. And also, the NFT for loyalties, it's getting more popular, especially for enterprises. Uh, trying to use the NFT technology to increase uh, uh, the loyalty and also um, the community engagement. So there's so many like uh, projects from the Starbucks or like Nike and also, uh, also other like industry like uh, K-pop as well. They are going to, uh, they are trying to use NFTs, and also uh, yeah, especially for consumers. I think more enterprises are trying to get into the uh, Web three using NFTs because it's you. Yeah, it, it's easy to use it and uh, increase like community engagement is uh, one of original things that blockchain can uh, stimulate. So I think the NFT for loyalty is a, has a bright future. Thanks for the answers. Uh, I want to ask this question to Thomas. Yeah, as you are working at Orange DAO, yeah, it's about DAO. So. Uh, DAO sectors has also experienced experience huge drawdown recently, like NFT and DeFi. How do you think about the future of the DAO? Uh, do you believe, and what kinds of uh, sectors in DAO do you believe the most opportunistic? Uh, yeah, uh, we, we have some portfolio company that work for um, kind of target DAOs. Um, and unfortunately, most of them um, are not that great, um, just because kind of macro is not great, and then the DAO itself is also not great. Um, and, but I still believe in DAO. I think, I think DAO is a very interesting kind of organizational way of mobilizing people. Um, and um, DAO has a very unique uh, characteristics, which is uh, compared to like working for a company or working for a startup is uh, you earn your stake in the DAO, like you earn the upside, right? It's like the more you contribute, the more you get reward. And I, I think that is actually, you know, a, a very good way of, for kind of newcomer to come in and contribute. Uh, if you think about like, hey, instead of like, I'm getting really good at negotiating my package when I join a startup, I kind of prove myself at a startup and the more I contribute, the more I earn, um, so I, I do think DAOs is here to stay. And to your second point, um, where it will fit better, um, I think DAO in general is a very good if somewhat getting consensus, like, like it, it operates on that, you know, kind of fundamentals where everyone can view, can, can voice up their viewpoint um, and then the DAO kind of try to decide where to go. Um, so I think this is actually very good for things that are somewhat public goods, uh, for example, or building things that are require a longer horizon. So hopefully, you know, it's like even if someone just maybe contribute for a year in a DAO, the DAO continues and someone can come and take the place and kind of continue that mission. 
Um, but of course, like for a DAO to really work, the number one thing I would say is you have to have a vision or a kind of directional mission statement um, that all the members kind of agree, like they believe in. Um, and that's kind of how you attract people to try to kind of work towards a common goal. Thanks for the answers. Yeah, uh, we have to have long-term view. Oh my gosh, uh, time flies so fast. Um, it will be the last questions. Uh, regarding the Busan, yeah, we use the Busan blockchain week uh, to make successful blockchain friendly specific city as Busan wants to do. What kinds of efforts that city needs to the forest? Uh, tax reductions, investment, uh, what do you think? If you, as you guys are uh, living in Hong Kong, Singapore, San Francisco, I think you can give some advices to them. Who wanna do the first? Um, I can go first. Um, I think for any city to make it work, um, you do need to have a very clear kind of regulations or kind of direction to it. Like people cannot build on a kind of uncertainties. Um, you know, it is better to have regulations than not having regulations. Um, and of course, you know, because a lot of stuff that most kind of, um, uh, what do you call it, like, like the, the government body, they may not have encountered. So I think they really should work with industry people to kind of help define and find a way to iterate as they go, so. One more answer. Yeah, I think from um, the, the governmental standpoint as well, um, at, at least for Singapore, uh, Singaporean government is very um, proactive when it comes to experimenting with uh, new innovations. So currently, the central bank is um, experimenting with CBDCs and also uh, cross-border payments as well under Project Orchid and Project Ubin. And, yeah, and, and so I think... Uh, Government being forward thinking is, is crucial as well in terms of um, how to develop a, a city. Yeah. Yep, as our time has just running out, I think we, we have to stop here. So thanks for your very appreciated uh, opinions and it's really great insights. Thanks for your time, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you very much.